Aria Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, if you're listening in, you might just be in the middle of an exercise plan and trying to get healthy. You're feeling great, you're motivated, and you're beginning to see some results. But in the back of your mind, you know your diet could be better, and you've probably heard that term saying that you can't outtrain a bad diet. What does that really mean, though? And is it true? And I'm the fitnessy experty fella. I'm fascinated to see how true it is as well. I'm delighted to be joined by registered dietitian Sophie Pratt to chat to us all about why improving your diet is so important in terms of maximizing your performance and your results. Sophie, a very big welcome to the show. How's it going? Thanks, man, for having me, Carl. It's uh, it's brilliant to chat with you today. Uh, going great. Yeah, not too bad. Can't complain. Thanks, I'm, man. I'm looking forward to this one because I, I, I've heard this term time and time and time and time again that, you know, how important food is and all of that. Uh, and we hear that diet plays a much bigger role in weight loss than exercise does. Can you explain the science behind that? And is it true? I presume it is true, by the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. 80% nutrition, 20% training. They say, Carl, okay. So if you think about it, you go out there even to just do a little bit of a jog. Um, we're working muscles, our heart's going through the roof. Um, we're, we're, we're doing all these things. We're burning calories. Um, and if we're not fueling our body properly, we're obviously not going to perform optimally. So um, it does come down to, to what we put into our mouth in terms of our food. There are certain macronutrients that we have to eat. So when I say macronutrients, I mean our protein, our carbohydrate and our fats. Um, but there are also micronutrients to keep everything taken over nicely as well. So there's loads of loads of loads of things that can that can go on in terms of the food and and optimizing performance but to kind of make it a little bit more simple um we just need to start with our basics and i think when when we go out and, and we go for a jog and we, we have a little bit of a walk with the friends or whatever we probably push the food aspect to the back of our mind because it's only a walk it's only a jog with the friends or whatever it is um but actually we probably need to look at it a little bit more um in detail and, and think about what we're putting into our mouths um so if we if we kind of break it down it is essentially carbohydrates for our energy protein for our muscle growth and repair and then healthy fats just for the for the for the rest of our body uh, insulating um the absorption of vitamins minerals and things like that that are that are kind of kind of important um but I suppose it, it, it does take a little bit of time to, to get used to. Um, when we're talking about food, we don't necessarily see the results straight away. Whereas if we go out and we exercise, we feel that sense of achievement, that that sense of accomplishment, um, if that makes sense at all to you, Carl. Uh, yeah, so if, I think people listening in will think that, you know, the exercise is possibly the easy change to make, isn't it? Because it's quite yeah. instant gratification. It's going for a walk, going for a run, going to the gym or whatever. And it, it's almost immediate. And the impact in terms of how you feel is immediate, where changing your food can be seen as a little bit tougher as a thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's so many factors um, in terms of why we eat, Carl. And it is difficult. We eat in, in, in numerous kind of um, forms. We eat for numerous reasons. And we need to kind of just stop and identify why we're eating, what we're eating, the benefits of the eating, um, and just break it down a little bit. So we kind of just think of, of, of food as food and we don't actually realize, well, food is, is actually fuel. So in order for me to be talking to you, be sitting here, be moving my hands, be, be, be speaking, um, I need to feel my body. Um, so I suppose it's, it's, it's kind of looking at that in, 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 in more detail. And when you say the, the results of that um, and not being able to see them as quick, yes, I, I do agree. So when we go and we change our diet, um, so even if I was to to increase my calories by by five hundred calories every single day for the next week, I probably wouldn't see too much of a change. There may be a little bit of water retention, a little bit of of, of a weight gain, very marginal. Um, but apart from that, there wouldn't be huge differences. So I think when we're when we're dealing with nutritional changes, we need to give ourselves a good six to eight weeks at least before we see any change. And that's, Carl, I think, where a lot of us fall down because we want, boom, we want miracle results. We want instant um, kind of whether it is weight loss, weight gain, muscle mass um, growth, anything like that. We want them the results now and it doesn't always work like that. So if we are going for, for, for kind of any dietary changes, we need to give ourselves that plan. Um, like, like anything, if you're going to run a marathon, you have to kind of structure it. You have to plan it out. You have to put in the hard work and then you see the results. Um, so it's 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 a, a little bit more kind of we'll say strenuous um but the, the the benefits greatly outweigh the the work that you put in absolutely 
And when people are starting out, it's probably fair to say that, you know, if they haven't exercised for a long time and they don't change their diet, but they do uh, change their movement patterns. In yep. Initially, so in that kind of honeymoon phase, they will get results and they will lose a bit of weight and feel a bit better and their skin may look a bit better because they're, they're just, you know, they're getting healthier. But that does yep. plateau after a while. And that's kind of one of the reasons it's, if you're not making the changes to your diet in line with the exercise, the results will plateau. And that's when it gets frustrating and tough, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, as you said there, if you if you start an exercise program and you, you start to get more active, you you will see results. Um, there, there there may be kind of a little bit of an increase in the muscle mass, a little bit of a, a kind of drop in the body fat, but then you'll, your body was like, is like, um, okay, right, I'm, I'm used to kind of feeling my body as it is now, I'm gonna plateau, I've done my little bit of exercise, it's given me a couple of results, but now I'm not getting the protein that I need to to build the muscle to kind of benefit more from the exercise, now I'm got, not getting kind of the the, um, the the carbohydrates to kind of sustain me for that extra little period, that extra burst of intensity. Um, so it's, it's about then looking into, okay, well, where are you going with the exercise program? Okay, so do you want to increase intensity of your exercise do you want to change from resistant based exercise to cardio based and kind of where do you see yourself in in three four weeks time or even 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 longer than that and based on that carl then we can assess our our kind of dietary changes um but as a kind of broad rule of thumb you want to make sure that you're going into every single workout well fueled um from the start so in terms of that you're looking at your carbohydrates we want to base we want to base half our intake off our carbohydrates um every single day, Carl, and that goes for, for the exercise as well. So when I say carbohydrates, I mean like our bread, our noodles, our rice, our pasta, all those kind of things, wraps, anything like that. And that gives us the basis of our energy for our, our sessions. And provided that they're not longer than one and a half, two hours, that'll, that'll get us through, that'll get us through. So if you're going out on a run or on a walk or going to the gym for a session, make sure that you're having some form of carbohydrates, maybe two to three hours before that, um, allow your, your, your body time to digest them and then by the time you go in or go out for the run uh, you'll have the energy to get through it and then I suppose if you're looking at the the kind of muscle growth aspect we're talking about the protein that's really really important and um, so when I say protein we're talking about our meat our fish our eggs and things like that and that's where some of us can can kind of get caught up um, in terms of the resistance as aspect so say if we're trying to build muscle if we don't get enough protein in um, the muscles will not be able to grow. Okay. So if you think of an exercise, when we do exercise, our muscle fibers break down and in order to replenish them, we do need the protein sources. And if the protein's just not there because our diet is is just lacking in it, well then obviously the muscles can't miraculously pull protein from from places and it needs to be from the diet. Um so the protein is really important to try and get in. And I'm sure Carl, you know all too well that there's there's a lot of hype about protein, protein powders, this, that and the other. Um protein from whole foods is is our number one that's what we want to promote if possible and it is it is possible to get in to get in protein uh, from our diet and it's it, it's just about kind of being prepared so when you're when you're going into that session or after the session uh, to recover we need to try and have some form of protein there whether you're going for kind of the, the 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 dinner option and you're just coming home and you want to have the dinner as you usually would which is fine um as a kind of post post exercise meal or whether it's just a little snack like a bit of greek yogurt or something like that after um something like milk that has a little bit of carbohydrates and protein that's absolutely fine but that is probably the number one is is, is the protein where we would fall down in terms of improving our exercise performance um yeah um, and protein is very much the it's the go-to trend at the minute isn't it every everyone you see everywhere is just chatting protein 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 and generally carbohydrate reduction they're kind of still the trends of the of, of the moment in terms of kind of the dietary trends aren't they yeah absolutely absolutely and it's, it's like obviously there is there is a need for protein I'm, I'm i'm definitely not not um kind of arguing against that but we do need to try and actually look at our basic diet, our basic diet before we go into any activity in terms of our protein intake. And if that protein intake is great, as in if we're getting in protein breakfast, lunch and dinner, well then that should give us enough kind of protein for the day, um, topped up with a little bit of a snack, uh, whether that's pre or post exercise, that should do us. But I think we're, we're kind of missing that fact and we are just going with, okay, we're, we're disregarding that we're not getting in 
protein in our breakfast meal or in our lunch and we're just saying okay right i need to get some protein in here nice and quick i've heard about these protein powders or protein drinks and i'll just do that and that'll be fine but we actually need to bring it back to the basics get our baseline diet nice and high in protein as well and then work towards kind of um, additional protein needs if we do if we do need them and to be honest carl like if if we think about the the, the average individual 0.8 grams of protein per kg body weight that's what we require um no yes, point if, eight grams per per yes. kilo body weight okay yes okay so that's what that's that's the average person okay and i i say that like we can go out for a little bit of a walk a jog and still that those requirements will be fine for us um it's only when we're looking at kind of athletic performance when we have to increase that okay so if we're thinking about kind of an endurance athlete um they would be up around 1.4 grams per kg body weight um so if you're doing any marathons or anything like that long distance running things like that and then if you're thinking about kind of a more of a strength-based athlete so um a lot of the rugby players weightlifters things like that would need anywhere from 1.7 to 2 grams per kg body weight so like realistically if you do the sum in your head the 0.8 per kg body weight it is it's a significant amount but it's not impossible to get in through whole foods pretty much okay folks you're listening to real health with me carl henry in association with leia healthcare chatting all things protein and carbohydrates and how important food is 80 20 there we go 80 80 percent food and 20 percent exercise uh i was yeah i was going to ask you that in terms of protein or da so we have that we have that nailed and in terms of because people that often ask uh on instagram when i do the q and a's like excess protein that if we take too much of it what happens presumably the body will take whatever it needs and the rest will just excrete exactly that's exactly it and that is what i try and flag to everyone who who comes to me carl and says i need more protein i need more protein i need more protein because there is no point there's absolutely no point in the in in the in the science um in the in the literature carl um after kind of exercise we only need pretty much 20 grams of protein within that kind of 30 to 90 minute window post exercise and any more there's there's actually no benefits for it so i think yes we do need to I, I don't want to be contradicting myself here but we do need to ensure that we're getting enough protein in there is absolutely no need to go the other end though okay um excessive because as you said there we will simply excrete it out and if we're buying protein powders if we're buying five steaks a day we're we're just like pretty much wasting our money um so yeah there's no need to kind of overdo it uh, with the protein Good. And like on the ground in terms of, you know, from a work perspective, what else are you seeing at the moment in terms of common dietary mistakes that people are making? So like, like intermittent fasting is still on trend. It seems very kind of popular and trendy. Or, uh, uh, and what, what else are you seeing? Okay. So there's, there's, there's numerous, I've, <laughs> I've had numerous, Carl, um, weird and wonderful things and each to their own. I love that. And that's why I actually went into dietetics because it is, it's so individual. Nutrition is so individual. But at the same time, then there is science to back uh, why we do what we do. And some of these dietary approaches are very restrictive. Some of them omit certain food groups. And some of them, as you said there, you mentioned inter intermittent fasting. Um, some of them have kind of restricted time periods. So these days, I would see a lot of the um, keto diet. So that is a, a so kind of primary. back in fashion again? Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's coming back in. It's coming back in. Um, so that's kind of a really high fat diet, uh, low carbohydrate. And that is primarily used for those with, with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Um and shouldn't really be used for, for the average person. Uh, intermittent fasting is another one. And I think that works for a lot of people because of the fact that eating within that certain with that within that certain time frame. Yes, there is this kind of thought around the kind of insulin resistance and 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 just promoting a better um, insulin sensitivity, but the main reason is due to the fact that you're only eating for the six to eight hours or whatever window you're choosing. Um, so yeah, the intermittent fasting, the keto, there is don't fall off the seat. There's juice diets going around. Are they back um, too? The oh minute. my God. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we're seeing a lot of that as well. Um, loads of, yes, obviously you're getting fiber, you're getting vitamins, you're getting minerals, um, but we're not getting a lot of protein. We're not getting a whole heap of fats. We're not healthy fats, that is. And um, we're not getting in what we need uh, in the right proportion highly 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 recommend that 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 you kind of reassess if you are uh, following a juice diet or something like that and, and presumably um, in terms of like you know if you're on any of those restrictive diets there's a huge impact on how you train how your session goes all of that oh completely absolutely like you're you're thinking of you're thinking of your body as let's just think of it as a as, as a car if you do not put the fuel into the car the correct fuel into the car will it optimally perform absolutely not if you go put petrol into a you are stuttering to a stop and 
that's that's the same as the performance so say you're going out to, to play a football match and we're on a juice diet we will do a couple of sprints we might kick a, a couple of a kick, kick a couple of passes and then you'll feel like your body is just being absolutely hit by a truck um you won't be fueled you will not have have any sort of power in your legs the muscles will feel like completely drained um because we're, we're, we're lacking that protein we're lacking the carbohydrates for the energy so yes if you want to just go about your daily activities and have a decent level of energy absolutely you need to look at your your, your kind of restrictive um, diets but more importantly if you're thinking about playing a sport doing exercise in a safe manner like health wise those restrictive diets are are not advised and if you want to take your training to the next level so say you're listening and thinking okay i want to run faster further i want to train harder and better we, we've looked at the protein or da's and requirements and they increase as the training load increases the carbohydrate yep. load presumably does the same that, that there's an adequate number from mo for baseline and then it increases as you as you go up exactly yeah you're exactly right so like in terms of your carbohydrate intake there are a couple of things that we need to be careful of um so the type of carbohydrate is important um when we are when we are looking to to, to kind of exercise and that plays a role in terms of the, the digestion and kind of the gastro uh, impact so when i say that carl i mean if you're going out to do i don't know we'll say sprinting um and you just have a meal right before you go out that's going to sit in your tummy that's going to affect your performance you want to be careful in terms of the timings of, of of the carbohydrate intake so when you're going to train um and you're having having the carbohydrates make sure it is kind of two to three hours before you actually go out and and, and play the play the sport or do the sprint um if it is those those complex carbohydrates that you're taking in like the the kind of the rice, the pasta, the noodles, as I said there before. Porridge is my go-to carb. I just, I love porridge. I have a really f strange fixation on different types of porridge and how, no, that's and how yummy is it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And some people, Carl, some people stick with the pasta. I find that's quite heavy. Some people like the potatoes. It's, it's absolutely up to yourself. But we want two to three hours before our exercise session, a source of the complex carbohydrates, which are those. Then if you're looking at just before your exercise session, um, if you're feeling like you need that extra little boost, it's the simple car, something that's going to be released really fast into your blood, um, which is the likes of kind of a piece of fruit, fruit juice, a little bit of a, a yogurt if you want something a little bit more substantial, but that'll just give you that kind of extra little bit um, right before you go to, to, to do to, to do the activity so it's not the pre-workouts it's not the, the tall cans of brands that we shall not mention or any of those which are very trendy along with protein drinks the pre-workouts are huge i see it in the the, the local ledger center that we're in they all come in from school chugging the pre-workouts and they're like 16 17 18 so you're saying have awesome. a have a piece of fruit Absolutely. There is no need to go for all these kind of pre-workout drinks. Uh, as you said there, we won't name names, um, but they're, they are very, very trendy. And I suppose it, it, it's just like the, the, the protein, Carl. It's just one of those things that is that is in fashion these days. But with regards to the health effects, the, the kind of benefits of them, minimal for the majority of people who are taking them. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're wanting just a quick burst, a quick boost of energy uh, with the vitamins, with the minerals, with the electrolytes and things like that, you can absolutely get them from your food sources. As I said, there are fruit juice who do the exact same thing, but sure, look, we're not going to go around with orange juice in our hand, are go we? Go on. It's not quite as trendy as, as, as the other stuff, but uh, but it's great, it's great to know. And the, the, like, on that note then, so do you think that possibly the market's become overly complicated from a nutrition perspective, that there are the pre-workouts, the post-workouts, the during the workouts, the protein shakes, uh, the supplement market is just has expanded with ultra processed food, you know, ultra processed supplements that probably don't need to be there. A hundred percent. And I could rant about this for days, Carl, honestly. Um, it is just something nutrition in general, whether it's sport related or whether it's just it, uh, the average person related. It's just so, so, so processed and, and kind of it is fake these days. And there are a lot of products out there that, that don't necessarily need to be out there. And I suppose that's kind of caused a bit of a problem for the average person, Carl, because we're thinking, OK, if I didn't know anything about food um, and I went in to, to kind of optimize perform my performance and I saw something that did say might improve muscle mass growth or something like that. Yes, you would be inclined to kind of go for it. Um, but if you knew about the other sources that could help you in terms of kind of whole foods, then we would obviously want you to go down that route. But there's just so much, so many products out there that have been highly processed, have 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 had like loads of things added to them to obviously reduce the cost for the for the companies um, and to kind of just lure people in. And I think it's 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 disheartening. 
it's disappointing, but that's the world that we live in. So I suppose that the kind of nutrition education piece is really important for, for all of us um, out there today. And for anyone listening in, uh, I want to finish with this question, which is that, is there like a, a nutrition SOS checklist they should be thinking through or talking through when they think about the food that they're putting into their bodies over the course of the week? Are there certain things that they can, you know, to ensure that they're getting all the right stuff in or questions they should be asking themselves as they're listening in? Yeah, well, I suppose from from kind of a an overall health perspective, um, following the the kind of Department of Health guidelines, the food pyramid, we'll call it. Yes, uh, we are shot, like steering away from that a little bit in a sense, but we do need to 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 kind of base base the majority of our intake off that pyramid. It it is right. Um, it is right. It's just we always kind of. I think we always give it a little bit of a hard time, but um, no, if you're looking at the food pyramid, Carl, you're, you're seeing the bottom shelf. It's all the greens. It's all the veggies. It's all the kind of colorly fruits. It's the rainbow, like base a good portion of your intake on a daily basis on the bottom shelf. You couple it with the carbohydrates, which are needed for your energy. You have the little bit of protein, which is the meat, the fish um, at each meal. And then you're having the, the, the kind of healthy fats as well. So in a sense, um, carbohydrates protein fat at all meals and one major meal that we forget um about the kind of those three main macronutrients is the breakfast carl and i was only saying it to to, to people there yesterday so important every meal carbohydrates protein fat sources base it off the food environment lovely if people want to follow you where can they find you instagram i presume yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, sophieprat.rd um, on Instagram and then a website, uh, sophieprat.ie as well, Carl. So you can catch me there if, if you want to get in touch. Amazing. Sophie, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We really, really appreciate it. Great tips, great content. So uh, well done. We'll catch up soon. Folks, that is it for another episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. You know where we are, at Carl Henry PT on Instagram, realhealth at independent.ie. If you like what you heard and hopefully you did, don't forget to rate and review. And we'll see you next week for more Real Health. It's long full. Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.